welcome to the Young Turks. We have a great show and a great week ahead for you guys. And I'm really glad JR let in with that song because I like anything that's auto tuned. More on that later in the program. All right. Uh, look, we got major news for you. As usual, good news, bad news, of course, is the crash in, uh, of the Polish flight uh, that happened uh, in the weekend. I want to talk about that. Great news coming out of Ukraine. So, a lot of Eastern European news today, apparently. Uh, in the third hour, though, I mean, look, we asked you guys to vote for the Streamies. We were up for Audience Choice Award as well as uh, News or Politics uh, site, best one in the world. Uh, I'm gonna t- for those of you who don't know, uh, in case you've been living in a box, I'm going to fill you in on the third hour. Okay, but hold up, hold up, hold up. Think about this, okay? Not only am I going to tell you what happened, not only am I going to give you a little of the background on the inside scoop, okay, but I'm going to give you the acceptance speech. I would have given had we won. Oh, come on. No, no, no way. You, know, you can't miss the beginning of the third hour. It's ridiculous. Okay, that's going to be too much fun. Um, now, uh, but that's not the best part. Of course, that's not the best part of the show. Look, t- today, I think I'm going to do it in the next segment. Let's see how things roll. Quick note here before I tell you the best part of the show. Somebody in the industry, we met with a lot of people in the web industry over the weekend because of these streamies awards that we were involved in, right? Somebody in the industry said to me, you know, there's a rumor going around that your show is not scripted, that you don't have a script or a teleprompter or any writers. That can't be true. Is it true? And I was like, yeah, yeah, that would be true. (laughs) They're like, they say all you have is an outline. No, no, see, that's not true. I don't really have an outline. (laughs) I have a stack of papers, and I have J.R. Jackson. (laughs) Okay, so listen. Uh, anyway, so that's why I'm not sure if we're going to do it in the second segment, but we're going to find out. But that, seg- but that uh, best part of the show, in my mind, is every once in a while we impart a little bit of knowledge on you guys as to how the political process works. We're going to do that again today. It, it's in relationship to the mine disaster right, that happened in West Virginia. Uh, but we've covered that before. Not only are there new wrinkles on it, I went back in time and found out how we got such terrible mine regulation in the first place. And it was just a fantastic article from a paper in Kentucky uh, that pretty much predicted everything that was going to go wrong. The three disasters that were to come in mining a- after that uh, article was written. Okay? And it goes to show you exactly how our political system works, and it's devastating. So, all right, let- let's get to the news because I, I want to have enough time to do that for you just in a little bit. Okay. So, look, uh, first, I got to make note of obviously this terrible crash in Russia. Uh, 96 uh, people uh, died, along with the president of Poland. Uh, they were going to commemorate uh, the slaughter of Polish uh, soldiers and officers uh, by the Russian Secret Service. And uh, of course, that happened uh, a long time ago. Uh, and as they were getting close to the field, apparently, according to the latest reports, it doesn't mean it's right. You always have to be cautious about the initial reports. Yeah, there was a lot of fog in the area. The pilot was told, hey, you know what? You should go and land in two different uh, airports, not the one you're scheduled for, because that one cannot guide you in. You have to do it manually. And the pilot said, no, I got this thing on lockdown, and I'm going to do it myself. He came out of the fog and hit the top of the trees, and it crashed. To get a sense of how devastating this was for the Polish government and the Polish people, the people on the board were uh, on board were not only the president, but the national bank president, the deputy foreign minister, the army chaplain, the head of the national security office, deputy parliament speaker, Olympic committee head, civil rights commissioner, at least two presidential aides, three lawmakers, uh, and on top of that, this is the Polish military that was on the flight. Um, army chief of staff, navy chief commander, heads of the air and land forces. And they were all going to this ceremony because, of course, it was to um, commemorate what happened to the Polish military. That's why so much of the top brass of the Polish military were on the plane. So, look, if there's any lesson to be learned here, and, and, and I, I don't know a lot about aviation. Uh, most of what I know I learned from reading Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers. So, I'm, damn it, Jim, I'm a talk show host, not an aviation expert. But I think they got to get those, what they're calling the 2154 TU-154 planes, out of the air. 
I mean, they've had an enormous number of accidents over the last, look, 66 crashes involving that plane in the past four decades, including six in the past five years. Those were the old Eastern European planes. The Polish government, this is really sad, Polish government said they didn't have enough money to replace the president's plane. It been tripped out a little bit, you know, they fixed the inside, but that's not the relevant part of the plane, okay? They, the relevant part is the part that you fly with. Now look, if it's pilot error, it's pilot error. Maybe it has nothing to do with the uh, plane, but I mean, you got to have enough money to get better planes for your top leaders. I mean, flying in those old Eastern European planes, I mean, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> and you got your entire government of Poland flying on it. It's nuts. So, again, it might not be relevant because it might be the pilot. Okay, so I, I don't have much more on that. And I, you know, I'm positive online there are already Polish jokes. But you know what I think. Too soon. Too soon. Okay, so uh, we're going to move on from that. And uh, look, it's such a tragedy, of course, that Putin uh, is seen embracing the Polish leaders. I mean, Putin's not a guy who gets teary-eyed often. And... I'm not sure he was teary-eyed, but uh, really deep condolences to the uh, Polish people involved and to the people, you know, to the whole country. Moments of silence, not only in Poland but also in Russia, etc. So it it was devastating for them. Okay, now that's the bad news out of Eastern Europe. Now the good news: the Ukraine has reached a nuclear deal, saying that they will get rid of all of their uranium. Now they had uranium left over when the Soviet Union fell apart. And we just struck a deal with them to get that. Uh, basically, we're going to remove that form. They're going to send it to the United States, and we're going to destroy it. Now, that's great news, because I agree with Barack Obama that the number one problem in terms of terrorism in the world is the idea that terrorists might be able to get their hands on some sort of nuclear material. Because, you know, the bombings as they are are horrific enough. But can you imagine? if they did it with a nuke. That has always been my top concern. And if you were watching the show throughout the Bush years, I, I'd be ripping my hair out going, look, the whole thing is loose nukes. Because that's the thing that could do tremendous damage. They're a small group. They cannot invade the country. They only have, at most, a couple of thousand fighters if you're talking about Al-Qaeda. Right? They're, they're not going to do a massive assault. They're not going to take over the country like the Republicans were saying. It's an existential threat. Wait, what, what does that mean? We might cease to exist? No, that's absurd. Oh, no, the Islamic Caliphate's going to take over. All that stuff was nonsense talk that drove more wars. But the reality, the real threat, and a devastating threat, is that they could get their hands on a nuke, and in which case they certainly wouldn't hesitate to use it. It might not be in a U.S. city or even a European city, but could they get their hands on a nuke in Pakistan in some way and launch it in Pakistan? That's certainly possible. God knows what Pakistan would do. Would they assume it's from India? I mean, the, the terrible implications are infinite. And uh, it's not just Pakistan where they might get it from. They might get it from the old Eastern European uh, or the old Soviet bloc, which are now mostly Eastern European countries, but some countries like Kazakhstan and Central Asian countries as well. And we got loose nukes all over the place. I kept reading article after article about how in Russia, some places they got like one guard on part-time duty guarding an area that has nuclear material. Now, look, that might be one terrible case scenario that I read about, but it didn't seem like they were incredibly well guarded in all those different countries. So I think the highest priority is to get those, not only the nukes, but the nuclear material out of as many countries as, uh, as possible and to lower their amounts, e even if they, some countries decide to retain some of that nuclear material. So when Obama emphasizes this, he is exactly right. This should be the number one priority in fighting terrorism. And it's absolutely refreshing to see a president who gets it and who actually focuses on the real problem. Now, we might disagree with this policy in Afghanistan or even Iraq, et cetera, and we might think that that doesn't have much to do with terrorism. But this does. And of course, just because they're Republicans, they can't help but you know, be wrong. The Republicans are, oh, no, Obama shouldn't do this, Obama shouldn't do that. And now Lieberman, who is a so-called independent, but of course a Republican in disguise, is saying, you know what, that nuclear deal he made with Russia to reduce their nuclear arms? I don't think we're going to sign in the Senate. 
unless we get him to agree to build more nukes. Well, then what was the point of the agreement? And why does Lieberman want that? Because he thinks that, oh my God, there's a real threat and we need to have more sophisticated nukes to bomb who? Yemen? <laughs> right? No, it's because he's getting paid by the guys who build those nukes. And so are the Republicans. And their one other note of concern is we're not tough enough on Iran. But Iran is excluded from the deal that Obama talked about last week when he said, hey, listen, if, if you don't have a nuke, we're not going to nuke you. It seems reasonable enough. But if you don't have a nuke and you didn't sign the nuclear non-proliferation treaty like Iran and North Korea, we might nuke you anyway. Okay? And that's not tough enough? We might nuke Iran even if they don't have a nuke. But again, the Republicans and Lieberman say, no, not good enough. Uh, no, we're going to criticize Obama no matter what he does. All right, don't believe the hype. Don't listen to those guys. The deal that was signed today, the deal that was signed last week are fantastic deals. Right priorities in uh, foreign policy. And it's encouraging to see Obama go in the right direction and do some things that we wholeheartedly agree with. So a, a great day today in terms of the deals, not just with the Ukraine, but now we're getting 47 other countries involved to try to reduce all their nuclear arms. It's a great step forward. All right. I told you there was good news today. I told you. God, it's been so long since I got to say, Obama's totally right. Okay. So I feel good about that. Uh, I knew there was a reason I voted for him. Okay. Now, uh, you know that we told you at the end of last week, Justice Stevens is retiring, so we're going to have a new uh, Supreme Court justice. There's a lot of speculation as to who the nominee is going to be. They say the list got a little longer today. Last week, uh, I told you about some of the front runners. But the interesting news today is one possible uh, addition to that list. Hillary, Rodham, Clinton. Uh-oh. OK. Everybody calm down. First, the, she was suggested by, of all people, Orrin Hatch conservative Republican from Utah. Now, that's curious. When I saw that, I was like, hmm, what's he up to? Or what don't I know about Hillary Clinton? <laughs> because here's what he said. He said, I like Hillary Rodham Clinton. Uh, I think she's done a good job for the country, not just for the Democrats. That's Orrin Hatch saying that? Republican from Utah. I thought, oh, my God, I can't think of a worse endorsement for Hillary. <laughs> I mean, like, I... I uh, the first thing I thought, man, is did is Hillary so part of the Washington establishment now that the Republicans don't see her as a threat? That they see, you know, like, oh, no, no, she'll protect corporate interests. Let's put her in there. She'll be better than the other, uh, you know, Democrats, liberals, progressives that Obama might nominate. Okay, now, I think Hatch would be wrong. If you ask me, and you shouldn't just <laughs> be against Hillary because Hatch is for her, right? Uh, my guess is if you ever put Hillary on the Supreme Court, and you were the Republicans, you'd probably live to regret it. <laughs> okay. My sense is that once she doesn't have to deal with the political deals, et cetera, et cetera, is Hillary Rodham Clinton an actual liberal? I, I, and I'm just guessing here because it's so hard for politicians. You, they, you lose track of what they really believe, right? Because of all the deals, et cetera, et cetera. But my guess is Hillary's a bigger liberal than Obama is. And then if you put her on the Supreme Court, she'd go house. She'd be like, oh, yeah, no, that's cool. Ruth, let's roll up our sleeves. Sonia, come on, let's go, let's go, let's change this thing up, okay? All right, let's get to work. So, I mean, I'm kind of excited by that idea. But the White House has come out and poo-pooed it. And they said, no, 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 that's not going to happen. She's a great, uh, you know, Secretary of State. She's going to remain Secretary of State. I, look, I'd be surprised by the move. Uh, I think she's in the middle of a lot of things, very important things, like uh, the situation in Israel, uh, our two wars, et cetera, et cetera. But there could come a day where that's a logical move. I don't think today is that day. And if that happened, and if the Republicans think that Hillary's going to, you know, play ball as she has as a politician, I think they're mistaken. I think she's playing ball as a politician because she thinks she has to. Now, you might not agree with that, and I don't agree with that in a lot of ways. Uh, but I think that if you let the politics go, Hillary would go back to being a real kick-ass progressive. So... Let me dream of a dream that <laughs> one day that could happen <laughs> for her sake and for the country's sake. All right. So when we come back, let's, uh, let's get you uh, the inside thinking of how politics actually works. Okay. Story you don't want to miss. Young Turks. All I know, that, that, uh, 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 back, back on the Young Turks. 
Uh, Anna is back. How are you, Anna? I'm good. Anna, you missed a hell of a weekend. Oh, my God. Look, I know. I, I totally regret not making it for the streamies. Mm. With that said, that was the best concert I've ever been to. And I know you think I'm young and inexper unex inexperienced and I know nothing, right? But I've been to quite a few concerts. Muse blows everyone out of the water. I, look, I don't know what you're talking about. You've probably been to more concerts than I have. I know, <laughs> so, I know. Yeah, who am I to criticize? Oh, I know. Every you're young and inexperienced about concerts, no, no, little no. lady. Hold on, I hold remember on. Simon and Guy Fong, Simon and Guy <laughs> in 1969, no, no, and they no. were fantastic. Every okay. time I say it was the best ever, I'm oh. usually joking around, right? right? But when it comes to Muse, I'm not, I'm not joking around. They are the best band ever. <laughs> no, okay. I don't care. Now, now you took it over the top. <laughs> best concert, we're having a conversation. No, the I don't know. Band. They incorporate so many different styles of music into their music. It's incredible. It's amazing. I mean, do they auto tune anything? They might. No, they don't <laughs> auto tune anything. Well, then what's the point, man? I hear that's the way to go. They you got to auto tune. They have a goddamn pianist. They have a pianist. No, it's amazing. It's amazing. It blows me away. I love <laughs> Muse. If I ever get to meet them, I think I might cry. Well, <laughs> you are way out of control. I way love out of them. <laughs> Obviously, that's why she went to Vegas, and that's why she couldn't be with us at the Streamies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happened at the Streamies? I'll fill you in, Anna, yes. so you weren't there. Um, uh, it was a bit of an interesting uh, ceremony that they had. <laughs> it, look, it got a lot of hype, which I was very excited about, because we're nominated for uh, two awards, you know, Best uh, News or Politics Website, Booyah. And we got nominated because our audience voted for us. And then we were in the Audience Choice Award because our audience voted for us, right? And we feel good about it. We go in, and it was a bit of a mess, to be honest with you. Uh, some of the things, videos didn't work. I think they should have moved on a little bit, but they didn't. Sad day, it happens. Uh, and the skits were a little long. Some of them were funny, but uh, probably one too many sex jokes. And you know I make sex jokes, right? Mm -hmm. So if I say there was too many, there were a lot of them, right? All right, but all right, whatever, right? Everybody's having fun. And then we get to our categories, and we lost the best news or uh, politics to auto-tune the news. Uh, so from now on, we will be auto-tuning everything on the Young Turk. <laughs> I don't know if that was auto-tuning <laughs> or mentally challenged. I don't know what that was. A little bit of robot mixing. How am I doing, streamies? Next year? Think about it? Okay. All right, anyway, I mean, how can we compete? They're auto-tuning the news. <laughs> All right, so now that's me being a little bitter, but I'm mainly kidding around. And by the way, we, they had a great acceptance speech. I thought they had the best acceptance speech of the whole night, okay? Uh, let's listen to it a little bit. Let's give them a little hype. Fantasy, I like fantasy, and I'm leaving the scene. We must rebalance this department's programs in order to institutionalize and finance our capabilities. Yeah, forget about the Jets. Use the Super Soakers, get I'll get away. Cameos, water on the Monday night. Another convincing Carolina victory. Ooh, that's cool, but it ain't time to pop the Hennessy. Okay, I guess they're all tuning the news. <laughs> okay, good. No, it's, and they, look, they sung their acceptance speech, and it was great. So, God bless their hearts, Okay. Uh, now, that was decided by, a com by the Academy. I don't know who the Academy is, but they decided that. So, you know, we generally don't win those things if the Academy decides. Uh, but, look, let's keep it real. We asked you guys to vote a lot, and uh, for the Audience Choice Award, we could have won just the base on the voting. Uh, but i got to be honest, we didn't win on that either. Uh, Agents of Cracked won. Okay? They apparently have a huge website, Cracked.com, and uh, that spurred a lot of voting. And, I, we, you know, after all that voting, I just want to let everybody know what happened, right? And I love you guys for trying. And uh, it's our bad. You know, we should have started earlier with uh, this, that, and the other thing. I would do, probably do 100 things uh, differently. And I feel kind of bad that we let you down. My only uh, little bitterness on the Agents of Crack thing is they won the Audience Choice Award, and I don't think they thanked their audience. Oh, really? And I was like, that's the whole point of the award, right? And it, like, I had two speeches prepared, right? The mm. one, if we won the Audience Choice, was all about... The audience and how much we love them, and that's uh, because everything we ever get is because of our audience. Oh my right? God! Are you going to read the acceptance speeches? I'm going to read one of them. Oh yes, do it. Let's have fun, and I will be auto tuning the speech. No, no, no! Please don't do that. Just read. <laughs> Thank it. you for this award. <laughs> <laughs> What's more entertaining, real auto tuning or my version of auto tuning? <laughs> I'd say your version. <laughs> All right, so let's have a little bit of fun. And I'll, let me do this acceptance speech I would have done if we won Best News or Politics website. Uh -huh. Okay? I'd like to thank the Academy, whoever the hell they are. 
<laughs> Nobody knows who the Academy is. Um, I wanted to thank you guys, uh, and Jesus, JR, Tom, Andrew, Dave would have all come up to the stage with me, and they right. would have been there. That would have been awesome. And then I would have said, shout out to Anna, who's in Vegas, having a good time with Muse, apparently. Woo. <laughs> uh, and to Aaron at home in Pittsburgh, and to Ariane, mm -hmm. uh, who's uh, of enormous help to us. Uh, and then I wanted to thank the members. Uh, our members make our show happen, and that's absolutely 100% true. We're not beholden to corporate advertisers. We're beholden to you guys, uh, our members on theyoungturks.com. And then I wanted to thank the TYT Army. Uh, because that's who got us nominated in the first place. That's who gets us everything, and we love you guys for it. On a personal note, I'd like to thank my lovely and brilliant wife. Aww. Oh, Shmoopy Papopi. Oh, that would have been the touching part of the speech. <laughs> okay, uh, for all her wonderful advice on the Young Turks. And finally, I want to thank uh, the old media for sucking so much. <laughs> if they didn't suck so much, and they didn't lie to their audience, and they didn't suck up to the politicians, to the celebrities, uh, to uh, corporate America, to whoever pays them, that we wouldn't have the audience that we have. They've created a market need. So we really appreciate uh, their hard work at sucking so much, and uh, we want them to keep it up so we can keep on building our audience. Thanks a lot. The TYT Army is too strong. Oh, that would have been an awesome. Uh, and in the, you good. know, that we all go on the stage, da da da. Mm -hmm. All right, next year we auto-tune it and we win the thing and we go up and do it. And, like they did, we'll sing it. <laughs> We'd like to thank the TYT Army. <laughs> okay, never mind. Never mind, maybe not. <laughs> but anyway, we had a fun uh, time and we got to meet everybody in, in the industry and everybody on YouTube mm -hmm. and etc. And so it was great. It you was know, great. And our names got mentioned a bunch of times. Uh, somebody, I ran into somebody at Carl's Jr. after the ceremony. They're like, what did you get nominated for like 28 awards? And I was like, no, it was only two. But he, the name kept coming up and stuff. So it was good. It was good hype. And I'm really glad we got nominated. And again, in all seriousness, that was thanks to you guys. If we hadn't gotten nominated, all those people in the industry wouldn't have known us as much. You know, throughout the entire event, I would get uh, text message updates from JR or from Andrew. And, you know, I was curious. I love that I was getting the updates. I have to say, though, my favorite text message was from JR, and it said, Jake is wearing slacks, not jeans. <laughs> <laughs> that was the breaking news. Like, we should have tweeted that out, because I'm always wearing jeans underneath this. And, and if you saw the Oscar video, you saw that do that. But I went nuts. There was, they, the dress code was fancy. Ooh. So I interpreted that as the same exact outfit, but with slacks. <laughs> we actually had a bet uh, uh -huh. on Friday night. And um, my bet was that you were going to wear jeans. The guy said you'd wear slacks. Yeah, well, they were right. What do you owe him? A filet of fish? No, we didn't really have a serious bet. Okay. It was more like, I'll bet you. Uh, okay, I'll bet you. <laughs> Did you auto tune the bet? No. <laughs> By the way, the whole night afterwards, I'm <laughs> everywhere I'm going to, I'd like to have a drink. What did you guys do afterwards, <laughs> after the streaming awards? Was there was a party. Was oh, the party oh, awesome? Oh, we brought the house down. Yeah. Did you really? Kind of. I mean, look, you know, it's, it was a little surreal. You know, there was all of these, you know, web celebrities. So, you know, there's Sexy Phil, there's Shane Dawson, there's the oh. Smosh guys, there's Sandeep Parikh from Legends of Neil and Felicia Day from The Guild and all. You know, you might know some of these people and you might not, but mm -hmm. it was kind of cool. It was like a, you know, it, it was like... As they say, the stream news was kind of like the Oscars of, of web TV until they kind of fucked it up. <laughs> you didn't hear that from me, but hopefully they'll do better next. Okay, so uh, let's do some real news. All right. Minus the auto tune. <laughs> all right, all right, I'm going to let that go. You know what? Maybe in the post game, we'll do a little more bitterness. Okay, so that'll be fun. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can't unleash in the third hour. Unleashing is only for our members. Oh, is that right? Yes. You so in the post-game show, we'll... Release the Kraken! Release the Kraken! <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't think it'll be that bad. But we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more. Give some more personal stories in the mm -hmm. post-game. Okay? Okay. All right. Let's start off with Big Ben. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, back in March, uh, someone accused him, a college student actually, accused him of sexual assault at a Georgia nightclub. It turns out that those charges have been dropped. <laughs> Uh, district attorney says that uh, she failed to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. She also added, uh, now that we don't have anything ben I, uh, on Ben, I guess we're going to have to... Release the Kraken! <laughs> Alright, so look, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? 
innocent. Innocent. You see that? Of course, Big Ben wasn't going to commit any crime like that. All this stuff was nonsense. Right. A, a Steeler like that. Come on. Leader of the Steelers to do something like that. Unthinkable. Obviously, it wasn't true. So when Pittsburgh decided to release the Kraken, as you say, um, they ended up, the Kraken obviously is Santonio Holmes, the Super Bowl MVP from a couple of years ago. Yeah. Apparently. I mean, yeah, that's this guy thing. gets into a little bit of trouble, and guess what happens to him? Oh, I see where you're going with that. I see where you're going with that. You going to make this thing racial or what? No, it's about a wide receiver. Oh. You know, because they're the prima donnas. Where do, you, where do you think I'm going with this, Jake? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, listen, here's this, uh, the situation. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, on the same day we find out that Santonio Holmes has been, uh, well, they're not really traded to the Jets, okay? And Santonio Holmes was the MVP of the Super Bowl and is a very good receiver. And they obviously have good rapport with uh, Roethlisberger, but he violated the the league rules on uh, on drugs. And so he's going to be suspended for four games. And uh, he'd gotten into trouble before. He was accused of throwing a drink uh, at some woman at a bar. It's totally unclear whether he actually did or not. He's got witnesses saying it wasn't him, it was somebody else. Uh, but the Steelers wanted to send a message uh, saying, you know, we won't tolerate this kind of nonsense. Uh, now, a lot of the stories had been about Roethlisberger before. And all kidding aside, that's what, of course, JR is referring to. Uh, but Roethlisberger is the quarterback, and you're not going to let go of your, you know, Super Bowl winning, two-time Super Bowl winning quarterback. So you're like Ben. I'm going to give you a message, San Antonio. You're gone. <laughs> okay. So now here's the thing, right? I, part of me likes the the message. You know, we're going to do this thing right, like the Steelers theoretically always do, and we're going to have a good team unity, and we're not going to tolerate any nonsense. And that's part of what people love about the Steelers. Now. The flip side to that is, it was just pot, man. I mean, Santonio San Holmes has a long history with marijuana. He even tweeted out, I think, at one point he's gonna, that he was going to wake and bake one morning, like he got up and smoked some, and then he got caught, apparently, on a number of occasions. But it's pot. I don't give a damn, right? It's not like he's a bad guy. Like, oh, he's a real troublemaker. He's smoking pot. I don't give a flying fuck that he smokes pot. As long as he catches those passes in the Super Bowl. Like, if he was a bad guy and he was hurting other people, running people over with his car and stuff, shooting himself in the foot or whatever, right? Then we got a conversation. But, you know, you know, I'm, look, for me, I don't care what kind of drugs it is. But it's not even like heroin or cocaine. It's pot. So you get traded to the Jets because you smoke too much doobies? <laughs> Come on. There's got to be some sort of bounds of reason. So, anyway, and, and as a Steelers fan, my real problem is, you know what they got in return for him? He's a former first-round pick. Proven uh, wide receiver in the NFL at, at Super Bowl MVP. They got a fifth-round pick for him. A fifth-round pick? I mean, I know the Steelers are excellent at, you know, analyzing draft picks. But, I mean, that's like a slap in the face. That's crazy, man. I can't believe no other team didn't offer him more. And you know what? The other teams are stupid. I'd have come in with a fourth-round pick and absolutely stolen him. As it is, Jets are smart. They get a really great receiver who likes to smoke pot every once in a while, who won't be able to play the first four games for a fifth-round pick, which they probably would have bungled anyway. So the overall winners of the Steelers' problems are apparently the Jets. So now if Santonio San Holmes beats them in a playoff game, then I'm going to go on a real crusade to legalize marijuana. All right. Those are your sports stories. And uh, you know what? Let's take a quick break. Now that we auto-tuned the whole segment and auto-tuned the Steelers the whole segment. All right. We'll come right back. Got some fun stories for you. Back on the Young Turks. All right, more, more of my auto-tuning uh, in the post-game show. All right, let me thank some members here. Uh, I'm going to go to two lieutenants. Uh, Lieutenant Charlie Dela Cruz. Lieutenant Dela Cruz, pleasure to be here with you at uh, Rebel Headquarters. And Kathleen O'Day, uh, Lieutenant O'Day, nothing but a goddamn pleasure. All right, so now, uh, members, as you know, uh, for my non-acceptance speech earlier in the hour, make the show happen, and we love you for it, and you get a post-game show. Uh, which is a little wilder and crazier. Yes. Uh, where I will tell you more details of this uh, crazy weekend. And uh, we will auto-tune many things. 
And I have a Sarah Palin clip for you guys as well. So a little bit of politics, a little bit of personal stuff. Right. All right, let's and, do it. No, no, I got, I got some raffle oh, news. Oh, we got raffle news. I mean, I can't believe you could forget the raffle news. That's Come on. the most important news of the day. New raffle news, okay? New raffle news. By the way, uh, <laughs> the guy who won last week, again, you know, my obsession with the members' names, keeps going through my head. Jean Carlos Giacomo. It's an awesome name. That is an awesome name. <laughs> He's going to get two movie tickets and a TYT t shirt and a book of his choice. It's insane. That's but an what's happening this week, Casper? This week, we're going to give away more awesome prizes. Okay? Unbelievable. First of all, the member who wins the raffle on Friday will have the opportunity to call into our show during the post game and have a chat with us. Live chat. And you know what you get to do in that post game show? You get to release the Kraken. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, uh, what else do they get? But that can't be it. That's not it. You get more. And you get more. Okay. You get a $25 gift card to a restaurant of your choice. Ooh. And you also get a TYT t-shirt. Because how could we not give you a t-shirt? Most comfortable shirts in the world. Okay, you put on a t-shirt, you go to Red Lobster, you're like, step aside. Mm -hmm. $25 from TYT. Please step aside. Step aside. All right. Now I'm going to call the Young Turks from the restaurant while eating my, what are they, with those cheddar biscuits? Those are delicious. Okay, oh, anyway. yeah. Those are delicious. <laughs> By the way, we're going to do something big for our 3,000th member. We're not sure what it is yet. We oh, can't, we hold can't the give phones. you details. Hold the phones. Okay, be cool. Be cool. All right. So look, we're trying different fun raffles every uh, week. So on Friday, a new winner. And uh, yeah, the last week's winner, say it with me. Giancarlo. Giancarlo Giacomo. Giacomo. Okay. So next week, we'll see. Okay. Could be you. Go. All right, Jim Carrey is making news on his Twitter account because that's what celebrities do. They make news on their Twitter account. Well, why aren't we making news on our Twitter account? <laughs> okay. I don't know. Say something controversial on there. Oh, should I? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Jim I'm Carrey... I'm going to auto-tune my Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do that? Is that possible? The whole auto-tune... I tweeted it out. <laughs> Sorry. We should have an auto-tune button on your sound effects machine. Oh, we got to do something, it's because this isn't cutting it, but anyway, go ahead. Okay, so he gave commentary about Tiger Woods and Elin and their whole uh, cheating fiasco. This is what he first says about Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods owes nothing to anyone but himself. To please his father, he gave up his childhood and his freedom in the world. That's enough. All right, Jim, can bring it down. Yes. Bring it down. Okay. Oh, that poor tiger. Poor man. Yeah. I'm sure he's a tortured soul. To please his, to his father, he became a grotesquely rich man. Right. A multi, multi-millionaire. One of the best known people in the world. And then got to have sex with apparently 827 girls just while he was married. Okay. He did that to please his father when he was young. What more do you want from this guy? All right. But Jim Carrey's just getting warms up. Yes. Uh, he also has words for a tiger's wife. Yes, then he talks about Elon. This is what he says. No wife is blind enough to miss that much infidelity. Elon had to be willing, uh, had to be a willing participant on the ride for whatever reason, kids, lifestyle. Oh, willing participant. Oh, we got a Twitter controversy. Twitter controversy. Okay. Uh, all right, that seems kind of harsh. What do you think? That does. I don't think that it's an outrageous statement. I think that oh. I think that there could be truth behind that. A little controversy from the Casper. Look, that's something that R.J. Escow said when he was on our show, and I was like, "Yeah, I mean, how could you not know? She had to at least have a clue about it, okay?" Yeah. Now, having said that, if it turns out your boyfriend or husband cheats on you, mm -hmm. right, and then somebody comes and says, "You know, yeah, you are a willing participant," how angry would you be? I'd be angry if I wasn't a willing participant. But if I was a willing participant, then fuck, I got caught. Oh. That kind of sucks. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Well, that's, I, look, I think it's pretty harsh, right? And everybody tells sweet little lies to, to themselves. You know, like the, I talked a lot about Elaine Chow and Mitch McConnell in the first two hours of the show today, right? And they collect all this money for their campaigns and for their uh, family, etc. And then they take actions which lead to people dying in coal mines, etc. Now, how do they live with themselves? They don't think, I killed coal miners. Yes. But I got paid $200,000 by the Heritage Foundation. That's awesome. No, they tell themselves sweet little lies. Right? It's perfectly normal. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, no, I'm making the country more efficient. 
you know, I'm creating more jobs, blah, 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 right? And so I'm sure Elon told herself sweet little lies. No, he's out playing golf. He's doing this. He's doing that. And since he's a golfer, you know, and he's away a lot, it's pretty believable. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, how do you know while he's at Pebble Beach that he's hitting every Perker's Waitress, you know, in the three-mile area? It's hard to know sometimes. So, I, look, I think it's too harsh to blame the wife. Way too harsh. I don't think that he's blaming her. I don't see that as blame. Yeah, I mean, he's saying, not that she had it coming, that's too harsh, but, but that she must have known. And I, I think that's too much of an assumption. Mm -hmm. that's Why? It's, okay, it'd be just as much of an assumption, because when this broke, we all said, oh, I really mean one of the most recognizable athletes in the world. We didn't know he was cheating. How come she doesn't have a brain either? How come she can't have that knowledge that we have? And we're not even living with the guy. No, but think about this, Jr. I hear you, but... Look, you have to have some degree of trust in a relationship, otherwise it's not going to work. You can't be up the guy's ass, right? So if I was married to him, which would be a funny scenario, um, I'd be thinking every time he's away, is he cheating on me? But that can drive you crazy, right? And so at some point you got to let it go and hope he's not. That's why, you know, I'm that's how you sympathetic. Become a, that's how you become a willing participant. Because you go, well, I know the nature of a professional athlete, even though it's golf, even though it's different type of, you know, cloud over it it's a white cloud over it but then you, you you'll still be like no maybe not maybe not maybe not and it's not being it's not an egregious thing a horrible thing to do but you know the lifestyle no I, I hear you jr but then your conclusion becomes the same as always which is don't get married right i mean don't get married to a star athlete he will you know 98 percent chance of cheating on or maybe some people can marry a star athlete and then these women are just like i'm okay with it you should go into it being ready to be in an open relationship. Those are the type of people they need to marry. That's like all. Monique. Monique would be the right woman for Tiger Woods. <laughs> well, in some ways. <laughs> but I don't think Tiger's uh, taste in women runs uh, into what Monique's got going on. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, you take it as you and want. I think also when it comes to, well, the first thing that Jim Carrey said. Um, well, you know, he gave up his life, this and that. I mean, just because the guy is that rich doesn't mean he can't have issues i mean i don't know and not, not i'm not talking about the sex addiction because i think that's bs but why can't it be an issue that he has to give up his childhood yeah but he's rich he's, it's it's there's a good side of the coin yeah he's he lives a great life no no but i hear it's, you it's, if tiger he, would, he if just, tiger was saying this stuff then i'd be like shut up no no you know? no i'm the exact opposite if tiger woods is saying then he had an issue with how his dad raised them and he didn't then he did feel too much pressure, et cetera. But Tiger doesn't say that. He loves his dad. Yeah, and not and, only and that. And he loves what he did with it. So exactly. I think it's weird for Jim Carrey to step in there and be like, oh, I had to please his dad. It's like people get on my dad sometimes. They're like, oh, you put too much pressure on, on Jake. Like, because I'd come home with a 98 on a test. He'd be like, that's cool. What happened to other two points, right? Mm -hmm. And people think that's crazy, right? But I didn't mind it. It made me strive for excellence. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why you have the excellence that you see before you. <laughs> <laughs> if he'd known this was going to be the result, he might have gone in another direction. <laughs> but the lesson is the same. I was okay with my dad, and he was okay with his dad, and it worked out for him and for me. I lost to auto tune the news. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> All right, I'm only kidding about it, man. I really, <laughs> I'm not bitter. <laughs> Well, we'll talk about it in the post game. We'll talk about it in the post game. All right, what's next? Okay, uh, page six is alleging that Mario Lopez forced his girlfriend to get liposuction, a breast job, and a personal trainer to work out with daily. Mm -hmm. See, that, that book drives me crazy. That drives me crazy, too. And look, the reason why... Oh, I'm, she's I, gorgeous. She, Jesus. She is gorgeous. The reason why I wanted to bring up this story is because of a point that I made on the show a couple weeks ago. We were talking about how there can be a guy who's not very attractive, right? But if he has the right personality and he's funny and he's sweet, he can really grow on a woman and he can make a woman, a woman will forget about the fact that he's not attractive. He will become more attractive to her, right? Now Mario Lopez is the perfect example of a guy who is extremely attractive and upon first glance you think, wow, I want him. And then you read into his personality and his characteristics and immediately downhill. A little no twang, interest. wang, wang, Debbie Schlussel. Yeah. So it works both ways. Like, now I look at Mario Lopez and I'm just like, ew, ew disgusting. Oh, wow. Yeah, You're going because that far. Okay. obviously, look, I knew that he was uh, egotistical and I knew that he was full of himself before because he would talk about uh, 
how he has to work out every day and he doesn't feel attractive unless he's sweating and he was just way too into himself but that was something that I could kind of let go and then uh, when I hear about how he treats his girlfriend and how he fit, feeds into a woman's insecurities like that hell no not attractive at all the, Mario Lopez is this weird hybrid between the Jersey Shore and a gay guy you know what I'm saying like he's like yo bro yo bro check out my abs but at the same time, he's got like the hair piece and he's just like, oh my God, I look so great today and I want you to look just as fabulous as I do. <laughs> Otherwise, it won't work, right? And so, I don't, you know, there's something off about that guy. Not that there's anything wrong with the Jersey Shore or the gayness, but, you know, just be upfront about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, <laughs> and I don't know. But th th this thing about uh, what he does to his wife. Pressuring girlfriend. Her, girlfriend. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. it's his girlfriend? Mm -hmm. uh, Pressuring her to get liposuction and breast implants. And a personal and, trainer to work out with every single day. I mean, look, if she, you want to get her a personal trainer because you're rich, that part's no problem. As long as she wants to, right? But, I mean, how would you feel if you're going out with a guy and he's like, oh, by the way, I'm going to have to get you a personal trainer that you have to work out with every day because... No. And then he's like, and by the way, could you liposuction a little bit? You know what I'm saying? You know, can I, can I give a really quick schmoopy story? Quick schmoopy story, though. <laughs> no. This story made me so thankful and grateful for who I'm with. Oh. Because, no, 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 I know, super cheesy, but I have to tell you real quick. Like, let me give you an example. Um, oh. First night in Vegas, we went to this restaurant that served super fatty foods. Mm -hmm. Okay? As I'm eating, like, small bites, I'm feeling super guilty about it. I don't want to drink alcohol, extra calories, so I'm drinking water. And he's like, what are you doing? And then he tells me how attractive he finds me and how even if I gained a little weight, he wouldn't care. I'm gorgeous. I mean, that's the kind of man you want to be with, someone who truly loves you for who you are. Okay, anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, no. Of course, of course, I totally agree with you. And mm -hmm. I, look, who wants Mar Mario Lopez up their ass 24-7? <laughs> yeah, you have a life was actually enough. Work out! Ah! All right, dude, she's gorgeous. Just look, if you don't want her, the rest of us will take her. Believe me. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just wonder if there's a, I don't want to play too much of one side of this coin. Um, there has to be somewhere in the middle you can go. Now, there's a certain way of doing these things. Now, if he is doing it the way that we're portraying, which I, I actually, I, in my own mind, I think he probably is. If you're telling someone to get liposuction, it's probably on the negative side, the way you're presenting it to him. But let's not act like nobody wants their significant other to just become a fat ass. Nobody wants that. So if there's a way of making sure they don't and maybe asking them or just talking to them or maybe figuring it out. Like if I found out that the person I'm going to be with is destined to get fat and doesn't really give a shit, that's kind of the wrong person I want to be with. I mean, okay, just, okay, just okay, because okay. that's a whole different lifestyle. than what I, I don't plan on getting fat. I plan on staying, continuing to look as good as possible for the person I'm with. Kind of sounds like if the other person doesn't really care, then we're not probably right. Okay. right? But you shouldn't. But you shouldn't be on them like, Get liposuction. Here's a person. Did you go to the gym today? What the fuck? Look at that. Oh, look at that. I see the side he has. You know, if you gain 125, you're up to 125 pounds. Oh, my God. You know, that's, that's insane. But also, let's not say, oh, baby, you're 215. Oh, it's beautiful. Look just like you did when I met you. No, it's bullshit. No, like Jake always says, there's bounds of reason Thank for you. everyone, right? Thank you. So, of course, there's a limit. And look, I, I've asked my boyfriend before, like, what if I go, I get, you know, out of control and I'm, I'm pushing 200 and, you know, you're starting to be, you're starting to become less attracted to me. What are you going to do? And he's like, you know what? I would encourage you to go work out with me. Or I would think of, you know, things that we can do that are active together. Like, let's go take the dogs out for a walk instead of watching movies at home. And, you know, there's, there are very subtle ways that you can do things. You don't have to <laughs> shove a personal trainer up someone's ass. <laughs> <laughs> no serious conversations with Jake Yuri in the third hour. Okay, uh, no, yeah, of course, that's right. I, I don't have to really add anything to it. Bounds of reason. Uh, like, if you want to volunteer, if you're rich and you want to volunteer or a personal trainer, no problem, okay? And Jared, it's outside the bounds of reason because she was sickeningly gorgeous to begin with, right? She didn't have any of those problems. Uh, but if you make her do a personal trainer or make her do liposuction, no, can't have it. Can't play with it, can't win with it. All right. Uh, yeah, let's go to John Tesh. Okay, John Tesh dated Oprah back in the day, about like 40 years ago. Isn't that amazing? I mean, she's being flippant about it, but that's <laughs> like, this is major news. Really? Why? What are you talking about? Well, hold on now, don't make me do this. Okay, it's big news. It's 
I don't know. I'm trying to auto tune the news, man. I don't. I'm trying to do something with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's kind of cool that you know the back in the day that they you were hanging out, and you right. know Oprah was big back then. I like John Tesh is open minded. <laughs> oh, you mean big in that way? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I mean, laughs> uh, so who knew? All right, John, you got that thing going on for you. <laughs> get it, get it, get it, get it. Yeah. What's interesting is you know he came out and he uh, confirmed that they did date forty years ago, but for some reason Oprah and her representatives won't admit it. Yeah. Why? Why is she afraid? It was 40 years way, ago. Like, what's going to happen? By the way, John Tesh is 57, so 40 years ago is like 17. No, how long ago did it happen? Yeah, yeah, nearly 40 years ago in Nashville when they were both uh, young reporters. Okay. It might, you know, he must have been older than 17, but Oprah, like, fishing in the young waters back then, huh? Nice. And John Tesh, you know, he's a good-looking guy. Maybe she was looking for someone to be active with. I wonder if, oh, <laughs> I wonder if John Tesh ever thinks to himself, Damn it! I should have stayed with her. Because he's got plenty of money, so probably not. He wound up marrying Connie uh -huh. Selica. She was definitely hot back in the day. I'm sure she's still, you know, uh, got it going on. Um, I'm sure he doesn't regret it. But if you ever dated Oprah and you w don't have John Tesh's money, and she's not, like, ridiculously rich from what I know, but she's probably got decent money from being on TV and those great selling albums. Um <laughs> Uh, but if you don't have John Desch's money, you were dating Oprah, and then you let her go, you got to be thinking, oh! <laughs> Say, well, you know what? On the other hand, she never got married to anybody. Yeah, that's so what I was going to say. Maybe it's not like she was going to marry time. Seth. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, interesting news. Okay, listen. Hold on. Here's what's happening in the post game. I want to talk Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien's got a new show. Okay, that's happening in the post game show, okay? Uh, where did he get it? That's very, very interesting. And my thoughts on it, of course, are fan fascinating. Uh, and then uh, McGee's got uh, that, uh, what yeah. is it? Sluts McGee uh, has advice for, um, I was going to call Sandra. her Sandra. I was gonna Sandra call, Bullock. No, no, I was going to call her Sandra Day O'Connor. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> Sluts McGee's like, well, you know, <laughs> that decision she made in 02, I had some issues with. All right, anyway, no, for Sandra Bullock, that should be interesting. Don't miss the post game. What do you do? Come on, Young Turks.